We like to think of Star Wars more as science fantasy or space opera rather than true science fiction. But in truth, a lot of that is retroactive. Star Wars in 1977 was a lot more strict with its science fiction and really only casually dabbled in fantasy. The Jedi are seen as the sad devotees of a dead, disproven religion, not ex-superheroes from the last war. We didn't see things like ghosts, supernatural feats of physical prowess, or shooting lightning from your fingertips. The fantasy element were subtle, almost believable. Mind tricks and force chokes as presented evoke the sorts of mental manipulation that you might see in more spiritual disciplines of real-world martial arts. And in these circumstances, we do call those hokey religions or simple tricks and nonsense. A mentality that's hard to reconcile with the retconned superhero Jedi, but relatively consistent with what we see in A New Hope. And in the context of A New Hope, we could rationalize pretty much all of these things from a naturalistic point of view. After all, Obi-Wan doesn't tell Luke that the Force can give you supernatural powers. He says that it can have a strong influence on the weak-minded. Now, obviously, the Force is presented as a real, tangible power in the film, but my point is that even the fantasy elements of the world aren't the sorts of all-out magical antics that we would see in later films. They're fairly muted and fairly naturalistic, and we haven't even touched on the technological side of Star Wars yet. Because far from exotic technology with no basis in reality, Star Wars is positively packed with technology that's firmly grounded in real-world physics and the mentality of contemporary space travel. Just from a visual standpoint, we have modular ships with satellite dishes, docking rings, rocket bell nozzles, maneuvering thrusters, solar panels. Heck, we have a shot that's a direct callback to famous stage separation footage of a Saturn 1B rocket. This era of space travel is evoked all over Star Wars, even in plot-specific moments, like where the Death Star has to obey orbital mechanics before it can get a firing solution on Yavin 4. We almost never see these kinds of considerations in sci-fi, let alone in an alleged space fantasy that ostensibly shouldn't care about the hard realities of spaceflight. But what we get is a universe that does care, and it takes the time to convey the technical processes behind its technology, even its more exotic ones like hyperdrive, which requires a specialized computer to make complicated calculations in order to avoid stellar phenomena. We get more explanation for hyperdrive in Star Wars than we got for warp drive in the original Star Trek, which is ostensibly harder sci-fi than Star Wars is. Consider also the Death Star's hangar bay, which employs a magnetic force field to contain its atmosphere and apparently must be cleared of personnel before the bay is depressurized to allow the Falcon to enter. Clear Bay 327. We're opening the magnetic field. Star Wars would later smooth over these considerations, but originally, it took the time to communicate them. Take another example, heat management. Stopping a spacecraft from overheating is actually one of the primary concerns of spaceflight, because despite the supposedly cold exterior temperature of space, there's no air to draw heat away from the vessel, which means that if you're running electrical equipment and engines, you need to get creative in order to keep your ship from becoming an oven. And as far as I know, Star Wars is really the the only sci-fi franchise that actually cares about heat management. The Death Star's thermal exhaust ports are a critical plot point in the film, with both a main and a secondary port mentioned in dialogue and X-Wings with their S-foils. Now this isn't explained in dialogue, but S-foils are actually heat radiators. And we see heat exhaust vents on the Millennium Falcon and the Blockade Runner as well. In short, the spaceships in Star Wars aren't fantasy vehicles. They're actually quite realistic, grounded in the realities of real-world spaceflight. Now, they don't behave like real spacecraft. And that's because Star Wars does have multiple inspirations. It's also a Western. It's also a samurai film and a World War II epic, but it's also science fiction, and it has a surprising level of dedication to that fact. In some cases, more dedication than even supposedly more scientific franchises. But that's just a thought that I had for a while now. I hope you guys liked exploring that topic as much as I did, and if I miss anything, feel free to let me know. I know I've been a bit slow with videos lately, but rest assured that I have some big projects in the works, and I'm super excited to start unveiling those. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.